Hello, Algebra 2. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Um, today we are going to, uh, kind of for the bajillionth time, go over transforming functions, but in particular we're going to be looking at um, how intercepts change when we transform functions and also um, looking at what happens to piecewise functions when we transform them. Okay, so if you take a look at my nice little uh, box here, right? The way I've organized it is that I have the type of transformation. Um, so the first one is a translation which is moving up, down, left and right. Okay, so um, and then it's broken up into um, the horizontal transformations and what's affected um, and then the vertical transformations and what's affected. Okay, so horizontal translations are moving left and right. And for all of these problems, let's just make um, our constant. We're going to name it A, and we're going to assume that it's greater than zero um, for everything. And then we can make our, um, make our transformations. So if we have a function f of x and we want to translate it left or right, um, that's when we have f of x plus h, um, or f of x plus a, or f of x minus a. And since a is positive, f of x plus a is going to go left a, and x minus a is going to go right a. Okay, in a piecewise function, it's really important that you change everything um, by whatever your transformation is, okay? So for example, say we have a function f of x equals x plus 1 if x is greater than 0, or x minus 2 if x is less than 0, okay? Um, if I want to do something like a translation like f of x minus 2, then anywhere I saw an x before, so here, 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 and here, I have to replace with x minus 2. Which then, of course, you can simplify each piece. x minus 2 plus 1 turns into x minus 1. x minus 2 minus 2 turns into x minus 4. Um, and then this you can add 2 to the other side, right? So you have x is greater than 2 and x is less than or equal to 2. So that would be your transformed function. Okay, so back to the chart. So I just wrote that as a reminder. It affects every x. Um, intercepts, right? If it's a horizontal translation, um, your actually everything's going to change. Um, your x-intercepts are going to be shifted over that certain amount, um, but your y-intercept you're going to have to recalculate because basically, like if you think about um, maybe a function that's going like this, right, and maybe it goes through 2. So with this function, right, say for example that I wanted to move it over right a couple points, right? That uh, y-intercept is going to be shifted depending on what the function is. So you don't really know anything about the y-intercept. You might just have to solve for it in the function. So just an FYI. But your x-intercepts will just move over um, left or right. Now we're talking vertical translations. We go up, down. It's f of x, close parentheses, plus a, or f of x, close parentheses, minus a, um, and it'll be, you know, up or down a certain amount of a. Um, obviously, this is only going to obviously affect the y-intercept, um, and the y-intercept will just be shifted whatever, um, whatever your translation is. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Okay, next we're going to talk about reflections. Um, and basically, right, a reflection is you either reflect, you usually reflect over the x-axis or the y-axis. Um, a horizontal flip would be over the y-axis, and a vertical flip is over the x-axis. Um, and, yeah. Okay, and just a refresher, in function notation, um, horizontal stuff happens out, uh, inside the parentheses, and vertical stuff happens outside the parentheses, right? It affects... Um, X only if you're doing horizontal stuff, um, and it affects Y if you're doing um, vertical stuff. So a reflection over the Y axis 
is going to be f of negative x, okay, because it's inside the parentheses, it's only affecting x, right, because it's horizontal x, you know, makes sense, right, and the thing that's going to change on that is your x-intercept, your x-intercept will be negated, right, okay, now for the y, um, for the vertical change, um, it's outside the parentheses in function notation, so that turns into a negative f of x. Um, it's a reflection over the x-axis, and since this is changing vertical, your y-intercept will be negated, will be negative of what the previous one was. Okay, horizontal stretches and compressions. Um, same thing we've always been doing, right? f of 2x, for example, is um, the opposite of what you'd think, right? Um, so it's a compression, horizontal compression by a factor of a half. Um, and it's always inside the parentheses, right? So here we go. Again, this is also going to stretch or compress your domain. So make sure you're including that as well in your, the, in the equation of the function, especially if it's piecewise. Sometimes this may not be the case. It depends on, um, the actual situation that you have. So I just recommend graphing it and making sure that when you're stretching and compressing um, you can actually visually see what's happening on the function. Okay, now for vertical, right, instead of f of a times x affecting x only, right, we are affecting the function, which is y, right? And so if a is um, positive, which it is, if a is greater than 1, it's a stretch, if it's less than one, it's a compression. And this will likely affect your range um, and your y-intercepts. Okay, so for vertical, your y-intercepts will be multiplied by a. Um, if, it, if a is between zero and one, it'll be shortened, right? It'll be crunched. <laughs> um, if a is bigger than one, then it'll be stretched. It'll whoosh, pull it up, okay? Um, so that's kind of the general rule and then we're going to do a couple examples. All right, number one, <clears throat> h of x is the vertical stretch of f of x, which is that piecewise function, by a multiple of three, okay? Um, so the intercepts of h of x, first we would need the um, intercepts of f of x, right? And if you think about what this function will look like, right, is I'm going to have um, x squared which is this function, but only less than negative one. So here's negative one. And then I erase everything up until negative one. And then that x plus two part, when x is greater than or equal to negative one, um, that is going to be when x is negative one. Um, I have negative one plus two, right? I'm looking at this guy, I'm plugging in negative one. And that actually equals negative, that equals positive one. So it actually overlaps this dot here. So now we fill that in, and then we just have the function x plus two. So that means it goes through the um, y axis at two. Okay? Um, and then it says, okay, what are the intercepts? So it looks like we don't have, um, if we're stretching everything um, by three, that means that your horizontal, your x-intercepts wouldn't change at all. There aren't any x-intercepts, but they wouldn't change if we had them. Um, our y-intercept is going to stretch this way, right? And so our y-intercept that used to be at 2 is now going to be at uh, 2 times 3. So that would be 6. So our y-intercept now is 2 times 3, which is 6. So that changes that. And then your um, parabola is also going to stretch vertically quite a bit. Okay, so I kind of already did part B. Um, it says find the equation and sketch it. Uh, I didn't find the equation yet, but I did sketch it. Um, so in order to find the equation of h, right, h of x is a vertical stretch, so remember that's outside the function because it's only affecting y, by 3. So it's going to be 3 times f of x. So um, in the function area, right, um, 3 times, basically, we're multiplying both functions by 3. So 3 times x squared and 3 times x plus 2. 
Okay? Um, it doesn't affect the domain at all, so you can leave that as is. But um, that turns into 3x squared and 3x plus 2 um, with the 3 distributed becomes 3x plus 6. So that is your function h of x. Okay, next is the same function except a different transformation. So um, we're going to be reflecting over the x-axis and then stretching horizontally by a factor of 2. Okay, so remember if I'm reflecting over the x-axis, that's a vertical change, so that's going to be negative f of x. So I'm going to do one step at a time. So I'm going to say, I'm going to label him g1 of x and then g2 of x just so that like I know it's step one and then step two and then step two is my final one. Okay, so g1 of x is going to be negative f of x, right, because I'm reflecting f of x over the x-axis. Um, and so then that becomes negative x squared um, and negative x plus two. And then I can multiply that negative in just to simplify things. So I get a negative x squared and then negative x minus two. Okay, next is the horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. And remember, if it's a stretch, it's inside the parentheses, and it's opposite of what you think. So f, um, so it's going to be taking the previous function, which was g1, and then horizontally stretching it, which means I need to take um, my g2 of x is equal to g1, which is my previous problem, and then... Uh, with a one half inside because we want a stretch. Horizontal is always opposite of what we think. And therefore, yeah. Okay, so now I have to replace every x in the previous function. So this guy and this guy and this guy and this guy with one half x. Okay, so if you notice, I just replaced all the x's with one half x. So there and there and there and there. And now I can simplify that a little bit. Um, I can distribute the square if I want to, I can distribute the negative, or, um, and especially on this, on, on the domain, we really want to have like x, we want it to be related to x, right? So I can multiply both sides by 2 and end up with x is less than negative 2, and on this one, x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So my final function for g of x is negative one fourth x squared if x is less than negative two, negative one half x minus two if x is greater than or equal to two, and then we just need to graph that. And you can plug in points, um, or you can start with the original function and then flip it and stretch it, whatever you, whatever works for you. I would recommend stop the the video now and try it on your own, and then check your answers in a second. Okay, I just graphed both so you can see them. Uh, I've got f of x in blue and g of x, which is the translated version uh, and transformed version um, in green. Okay, this one we've got a movie theater that charges $5 for children under 12 and $8 for anyone 12 and over. Um, so knowing this, right, you might want to start with your original function, which is the original price, right? So um, my cost uh, depends on age. Right, and so if my age, so x is my age, and f of x is the cost, right? And so if my age is uh, 0 to 12, can't have negative ages, if my age is 0 to 12, then my function or my cost is $5. And then if it's greater than 12, um, greater than or equal to 12, and then it's $8. So let's write out that equation first. Okay, so my online prices are 20% more and um, adding 50 cents, okay? So that means that I need to multiply 5 by 1.2 in order to find that new price, that 1 point, the 20% higher price. Same thing with 8. Um, and then I'm also going to have to add 50 cents, right, per ticket. So that 1.2 is a vertical stretch by 1.2, uh, or an increase by 20%, and then 1.2 times f of x plus 50%, or 50 cents, is the vertical translation. So my new function is the following. 
And there's my prices.